Welcome back to DC Today. We're continuing our conversation with Sean in Seattle. And Sean, you were talking earlier about some of the changes that most likely will take place in Seattle because of the protests, because of now the talk of defunding the police department. What are some of the immediate changes? Well, I mean, it's, it's certain that in the city of Seattle, the police won't be funded to the same level that they have been historically. Whether that's the 50% that so, many of the, so much of the community is advocating for, or somewhere in between that and what the mayor has proposed recently about, I think it was some 76 million or something in that regard. But wherever it actually falls, there will be a change in the way that policing is being done in our community. There's also been an increased investment in the African American community here. Um, and that's beginning with Saturday schools that are launching in some parts of the city with the emphasis on African-American-based um, curriculum to the reinvestment in spaces that the African-American community has been advocating and fighting for for years that the city is now acquiescing in the midst of these protests and demands. So the landscape will look different. Um, how progressively different it is depends on how intentional as a community we are for standing what it is we believe in. So your focus really is on those young kids, those young adults. So tell me the age range there. And what are some of the programs that you're doing before they might wind up in the juvenile system, justice system? Yeah, well, we support 12 to 24 year olds as an organization. And, and beyond the work that we do in partnership with our district attorney, um, we also do work in schools around suspensions mm -hmm. and expulsions. So, you know, the, 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 the narrative around suspensions, which is silly, is that if you tell a young person they have to leave this community, that they can come back and everything's going to be okay. As the father of two teenagers, there's been many a times where I wanted them to leave the house for a couple of days because they were on my very last nerve. But if mm -hmm. I were to do that, that's child abuse. Um, but we do that in the public school system, and we tell young people, you can re-engage and we'll love you as if you never left. And that's simply not the case. So we're working actively within the school systems to keep young people engaged academically while giving them the tools they need to be successful in the classroom and the supports they need to be able to go home to a welcoming community. Speaking of those tools, much harder now in the age and day of COVID. So how have you guys had to change some things? And I know you talk about pivot moments. And yeah. is this one of them? It certainly was for us as an organization. Fortunately, we intentionally employ resilient folks, many of which have lived experience that lines up with the young people we serve. And as a result, when we pivoted, they pivoted quickly into this new virtual space. I'll also say it had more to do with adults getting up to speed and less to do with the young people we serve. They had already been super familiar with engaging with their friend groups through social media, video platforms, et cetera. Whereas us adults were figuring out the technology, the young people were like, yeah, sure, this works for us. Um, some of the barriers were making sure we had laptops to be able to give them and hotspots in the case that they needed it to make sure that we'd be able to engage. But all in all, it was a pretty smooth transition. And I tell you, it's because of the resiliency of our staff team and the terrific giftedness of the young people that we serve in community. All right. Well, the work continues. And I know you've been at the forefront. This is the moment, but you've been doing this for years. And do you see that in this moment, the change will actually come this time? Well, I believe that there's been change each time. Um, it's been much more gradual than what it feels like it's happening right now. The evidence will be in how allies mobilize after these protests are done. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, it's one thing to show up on a Saturday um, to march in the streets of the city that you're in, but we need you to show up on a Monday morning. We need you to show up at the ballot box in November. Mm -hmm. We need you to show up at community meetings. We need you to show up at school board meetings. We need you to show up in each and every space where black folks are being marginalized and that racism is, is playing a role in inequities. Uh, and, and we believe that you can, we just know that you should. The question is, will you? Will you stand with us in those spaces in the same way you've been standing with us in the streets? marching for social justice and the end of white supremacy. All right, Sean. Yes, we will stand with you. We stand with all our brothers and sisters. Thank you, Sean Good, for being on the show. Appreciate the work that you do. Want to continue this conversation, so please come back. Everyone stay with us. More of DC Today when we come back. Thank you. Many youth and families right now are facing uncertainties. And in the midst of all of that, it's still a good time for youth to choose a path of positive change.
want the young people that we work with to know that their goals matter. We want them to know that they're people that believe in them and care about them. We create a safe space for young people to express and explore their beliefs, their emotions, and their choices without judgment. This work is really about highlighting the gifts that are already inside young people. We also want to make sure that they have every tool they need so they can stay on the path of positive change. I want to give a special shout out to the team for how hard they've worked to make sure young people have access to our virtual programming. You pivoted so quickly, so intentionally, and now our curriculum and diversion practices are showing up in households throughout our county. And for that, I'm grateful. Thank you for your commitment to making sure young people have the opportunity to choose 180.